This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with SB Sports and Chaco. We're delighted to be joined by the Celtic Cobra, Seamus Devlin. How are you? I'm great, mate. I'm really good. Yourself? Uh, I think I was sort of saying you off camera. Sort of we're starting to get busy, more shows, the more fights, I guess, the more popular. I can obviously get interviews and stuff out as well. So all's good. More content for you then, mate. Definitely is. Um, obviously, it's your pretty much Belfast becoming your second home now you're obviously the last card you were fighting Graham McCormick now obviously you're fighting his stable mate and Jimmy Morrissey in the card um, how are you enjoying Belfast? Oh I'm loving it mate I think it's the second time in five weeks that I've been out here yeah, yeah I'm absolutely loving it mate it's my home away from home um, it was my dream to fight an Irish soil so to get in here two fights in five weeks is just unbelievable for me mate so I'm loving it yeah cloud nine I guess it's pretty much I'd probably say Belfast pretty much a lot like Manchester obviously good working class people good honest people so it probably just feels like you're, you're just in another part of Manchester for the weekend yeah just slipping over the drink tunnel it is it's just like it mate it is it is it's just exactly the same but um, like I said, it's been a while since I've been over here I lived over here years ago but um, it's been a while since I've been back so it's been an absolute pleasure to come over here and fight on Irish soil mate it really has and tell me obviously we don't normally obviously under review journeyman sort of I hope you don't mind me saying journeyman because obviously I'm respectful of journeyman but but obviously it's a tough task and a, and a trade that you have sometimes journeymen get disrespected in, in ways probably from what we've seen in your fight with Graham a couple of weeks ago you're a good honest pro you obviously are you're here to help him develop fighters as well how are, you, how are you enjoying obviously the challenge of professional boxing I'm loving it like I said I think um, the disrespect comes more from the casuals I think the people inside from my gathering anyway um, the people inside the sport um, are very respectful and understand how integral the journeyman is to the trade but um, I'm loving it, mate, every part of it. Mate, I didn't start boxing until I was 27, so I'm behind the eight ball. I didn't start boxing until late. So in my first year as a pro to be the busiest journeyman in the UK and Europe, I'm absolutely loving it, mate, absolutely loving it. And every second of it, I'm just milking it. And every fight I'm learning, I'm getting better by the week, I'm developing, I'm becoming more competent in my trade utilising my footwork, learning the skills, slowing down the prospects, he jabs your main weapon as a journeyman and I'm just loving it mate, I'm on the crest of a wave and I'm keeping going. How many fights have you had in total this year so far? This will be my 32nd in 11 months, so I'm looking for the all time record which is 35 post second world war, the record, because obviously before the world war they could fight twice a week, but we're bound now by, um, by rules and regulations, but this is fight 32 and I'm looking to do 35 in under 12 months. And when does the 12 months come up? I know we have another couple of fights lined up. Basically August, July 31st is when I made my debut. So very end of July, beginning of August is when the 12 months is up. And I've got a fight every week up until then. So It's crazy, but I guess it's testament to you yourself. Because obviously the, the problem is sometimes you probably don't know too much of the opponent you're going to fight. So you can begin with someone that's a massive puncher. And probably the, the art of boxing, probably sometimes you're saying hit and not get hit. But you're trying to avoid a bomb. Pretty much you're trying to avoid getting stopped. Because obviously if you get stopped, you're out for 28 days. That's you just hit the nail on the head that's the hardest part the psychological aspect because you don't know what's in front of you you've got a different equation every week and this equation might have a little bit of lever in these hands and it might hit hard and like I say your occupational hazard is getting cut or getting stopped so it's always in the forefront of your mind to get through it, but at the same time you want to keep him honest and you want to entertain the crowd they're paying they want to see a good fight so I think I've found a perfect blend where I can do that but still keep myself safe you can have safety first which your pride can take a bit of a dint in but I'm lucky because I've got a skin like leather and put together like an old leather boot, so I'm lucky in that respect. But yeah, it is. You've hit the nail on the head. It is. It's hard. You never know what is in front of you, so you've just got to act accordingly. I guess sometimes it's been good friends with the referee sometimes as well. Obviously, when you're you're in the corner, we've seen some brutal stoppages in the past of people getting stopped and the punches landing. So sometimes it's making sure the referee knows, look, I'm still in this. I'm not getting hit. Because the last thing you want to do is be stopped and obviously potentially ruin a record. Yeah, it's a good thing you mentioned that. I was thinking the other week about that because I've had some, especially in my first 12, 13 fights where I was a little bit more like a rabbit in the headlights where I wasn't quite as competent and confident as I am now. And there's a few times when I look back and I think, the ref could have stopped that there. You know what I mean? Well, I wasn't really answering back. and But I think a lot of the time I... Um, a few things that I do, I make a few noises, I do a little bit of show, but and I think that helps the referee then knows he's okay, we'll let him carry on. But I've had a couple where the referee probably could have intervened if he didn't know me, I didn't know me in the trade, he could have intervened, but I've, uh, I've come through okay, so yeah. And I guess obviously it's making sure you always stay ready as well. I guess you're, you're lining your fights up every week, so you're sort of, you're planning sort of like you do for your lunches, you're sort of, right here, where am I fighting this week, <laughs> you know, and everything else. But, yeah. but, but obviously you're, uh, Jimmy Morrissey, obviously, is quite, quite a tall guy. 
Um, he's obviously come from Muay Thai and stuff as well. He likes to fight. Um, but I guess probably in, in your 11 months you've been a pro so far, you've probably seen nearly everything there is of, of boxing so far. Yeah, I've had them shorter, taller, southpaws, tricky defensive fighters, come forward fighters. I've had every single style. Um, from watching him, I think I'll fare well with him. I like the fact that he's told and mix a few things that I'll not go into, I'll not elaborate too much, a few things I've been working on the gym, inside work, I can try and utilise and implement while I'm in there. I watched an interview we did not so long ago and he was a very respectful geezer, a very respectful guy and he's got my respect as a fighter and as a man, but uh, I think it should be interesting. Should be interesting. He's obviously a potential Celtic title fight coming up now in a couple of weeks' time in Scotland as well. So I guess more so for you, it's probably good news. He's another fight a few weeks away because he'll obviously want to avoid head clashes and stuff as well. So it's probably going to help you in terms of obviously breaking your record. Yeah, it was the same. Um, it was similar circumstances to Graham. I think he had a Celtic title lined up. So to be fair to him, there's a lot more pressure on them because they know they've got to come through that. And if you've lost to a journeyman with a record of mine, it's not going to help them progress and go forward. So you've got to give them that respect because there's a lot of pressure on. They're taking on a journeyman, a, poten a potential banana skin when they've got that Celtic title fight lined up. So yeah, massive respect to him. But... Um, probably do me a favour, like you said, because they, they'll want to avoid uh, getting stuck in too much head classes and whatnot. So, yeah, probably um, be a lot easier for me, won't it? Definitely. Well, and obviously, I guess, when you when you do break the record, obviously, the most fights in a year, what's the next plan you're going to do? Is it going to be, obviously, you know, there's journeyman out there, it's obviously over 200 fights. Are you sort of looking long-term at the sport of, obviously, breaking bigger records or... Yeah, I'm not looking, but I want to be, um, my, my first goal is to become a centurion. Well, the first one is to actually get the most fights in a the year, then my second goal is to be um, a centurion. My third, which is a more long-term goal, is to become the quickest centurion in history. So I want to get the 100 fights quicker than anyone's ever done it. So I always set myself little short-term goals and long-term goals. You've always got something to aim for, it always keeps you in the gym, keeps you busy. You've got that incentive then. Um, but my main goal is to become a centurion in the quickest time in history. Put myself in the history books for good. Well, I guess in some ways we can obviously say we are be proud when you break a record because we've obviously got to see two of your fights in person. Um, but we obviously wish you well, obviously, in, in, in terms of obviously breaking your record. No doubt Mark will obviously have you back here again because you're a good, honest pro. You come to fight, you turn up, and you, and you entertain the fans as well. Um, have you any sort of big plans, I guess? Obviously, it's getting on a, a big card or anything like that. Have you sort of any big dreams of, you know, fighting in the zone or sky or anything like that? Yeah, well, it's funny you mention that because... Um my manager, my uh, coach, Curtis Gargano, massive shout out to Curtis. He's a mint guy, absolutely brilliant for journeyman. And he just gets me great opportunities. I mean, I fought Joe Laws on a Bellum show. That was in my first year as a pro. That was a big show. He's on Box Nation. And he's um, he's got me some some big fights lined up this year. Um, BT Sports, I think, will be the next um, destination for me on a Frank Warren card. But, uh, yeah, whatever comes, mate, and I'm up for it. But, yeah, I've got, I've got, um, I've got my sights set on um, some big shows, mate, big pay-per-views. Well, listen, thanks very much, Seamus, and all the best for tomorrow night. Thanks for your time, mate. Absolute pleasure, Paul. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you.